The African National Congress Deputy President David Mabuza said that the party would root out corrupt leaders to reclaim its dignity. Speaking yesterday in Polokwan ahead of the ANC's January 8th statement commemoration, the governing party's deputy president said the party itself is not corrupt, but rather that there were individuals uh, within the party uh, who were. And then for reaction on this, I'm now joined by Levi Ndo, political analyst. Levi, good to have you with us. I mean, uh, one would say factional battles within the ANC are alive and well. In fact, are raging would be the word uh, to use at this particular point, even as they gear up to celebrate this 110 years, a milestone. You're already hearing, for example, of the Lambert District ANC wanting to host a soccer tournament. And on the bill, they've got suspended Secretary General Ace Mahashule. If uh, the events of yesterday are anything to go by, there's seemingly some security risk around the president who had to be whisked away from the ANC Women's League uh, 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 event where he was supposed to address the Lilian Goy Memorial Lecture. Is the ANC truly capable of renewal and transformation? Good afternoon, Tavo. Good afternoon to the viewers uh, at home. Yes, um, I think there is a, a, a way for the ANC to be able to come out of this situation. But I think it actually depends on the ANC itself to be able to come out of the situation. Why do I say so? It is because the situation in the ANC is not that much um, uh, so uh, complicated that it could not be resolved. The challenges of the ANC are self-inflicted. They are caused by members of the ANC themselves. And it is the very same members of the ANC who need to act over the issues that are actually affecting the ANC. For an example, if the ANC has been able to realize that one of the challenges they face is factionalism, it is then the ANC itself that must develop guidelines that are supposed to be able to deal with factionalism in its own totality. If the ANC is able to deal decisively with ill discipline within its own ranks, then the ANC can be able to survive the challenges that they face. If the ANC is able to take harsh decisions on corruption and corrupt individuals within its own ranks, then the ANC can be able to survive all this. The unfortunate part is that you have the ANC that is lenient on ill discipline, you have the ANC that is lenient on corruption and corrupt individuals. You have the ANC that is not able to deal decisively with those that are seen to be active participants in factional activities within the party. So if nothing is taken against all these three elements that I've actually mentioned, then the ANC is heading towards its own death. Yeah. I mean, is there a political will within the party to do that? You have uh, one of the top six members, in fact, the, the chairperson of, of the party. I don't know if you've seen this clip, but it's, it's in the public space, in public domain. He's addressing some sort of gathering following the release of this report. He says, let us not use the state capture report basically to annihilate each other. You know, let's use the state capture report to rebuild the organization. Don't just arrest everybody. And you listen to that. He's saying it willy-nilly as if to say, well, uh, let's protect each other within the party. Don't use this report to now go after one another and arrest one another. And you ask the question, is there political will then in the party to deal with those who are in corrupt, uh, who are found to, to have uh, been involved in corrupt behavior? Well, I think um, the ANC leadership has been given a mandate by the delegates at the NASRAC conference. And uh, firstly, the, the conference in NASRAC um, made a bold statement that they will continue or they will support the activities of the, of the Commission on State Capture. Number two, the ANC has taken a clear resolution on matter that relates to corruption and corrupt individuals. It then requires those that are given the responsibility to lead the ANC to act harshly on those that are uh, involved 
in corrupt activities. It also has to go further. You only need, don't need people to act on, on those individuals. You also need individuals who love the ANC, who are seriously implicated in corruption or corrupt activities to assist the ANC by not wanting to occupy positions of responsibility in the party because that tarnished the image of the party. I, I, I would have expected long time ago that those that claim to love the ANC more should be the very same people who should be at the forefront of implementing the decisions of the ANC on matters of corruption. Unfortunately, that does not seem to be the case. You need members of the ANC to be at the forefront of not arranging uh, a parallel activities whilst the ANC has got its own activity that is taking place. That is also uh, um, associated with ill discipline within the party. And hence I said, these three issues, if they are not dealt with decisively by the ANC, then you are actually going to see the ANC moving towards its own death. What the ANC is trying to avoid is not to be harsh on individuals, assuming that certain individuals are going to change. And unfortunately, that is not the case. Instead of moving towards a sudden death, the ANC seems to be moving towards a slow death because not taking uh, action against those elements that I've uh, mentioned, it's, it takes the ANC into moving towards a slow death. Now, as we speak, I mean, you've got the SG or suspended SG of the party not taking part in this rather big milestone, 110 celebration, a birthday. Yet, you still get a sense that he is still a force within the party that can distract the organization from mobilizing for, for, for a big occasion such as this and have a parallel uh, event happening uh, on, on, on the side. Will the ANC see another milestone? Well, um, it, it, it is a possibility, but it also depends on how um, strong the other grouping that uh, is being led or that is being associated with uh, the suspended SG do uh, behave or exercise their own activities. It is also very clear that even whilst uh, uh, the SG was being suspended up until now, there is still a very strong grouping within the ANC that uh, is, is still showing elements of um, displeasure to that decision. There is, we still have groupings within the ANC that uh, um, still expresses the, uh, 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 that the SG to them is not suspended. You have got a grouping that also uh, still vows that we're still going to use other uh, um, activities of the a a ANC to deal with the matter of the suspended SG. So obviously, you can still tell that you still have a grouping that has got a huge uh, a support for the suspended SG. And that also is part of uh, strengthening the divisions within the party. But one must also acknowledge that um, uh, the, 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 the suspension of the SG it's also, uh, it also creates frustration, especially on the part of the SG and his supporters, because the matters at the courts are also dragging and dragging and dragging, and which else also uh, raises questions on for how long is the SG supposed to be a suspended individual while the court processes are also taking too long. But it, it also requires the leadership of the ANC to develop guidelines on how best can they deal with suspended members on serious uh, uh, accounts like one associated with Mahashule and the legal processes that seem to take longer than expected. Yeah. It is uh, the year of their elective conference uh, where uh, a lot of contestation is expected uh, to also happen during this particular year. I mean, uh, if we look at the handling of the January 8th celebration, uh, what are we to expect uh, going into that uh, elective conference and the events that uh, normally come uh, with an elective conference of, uh, of the ANC? 
the ANC calendar um, for 2022 is going to be very, very busy. Uh, remember, you, uh, the ANC still has to go to a number of regional conferences. Provinces must go to their uh, provincial conferences. You have got the National General Council, policy conference, and then the elective conference. And all these things are supposed to happen in a period of 12 months. And of course, in this period, uh, those that are given responsibilities in the party have to deal with matters of policy, they have to deal with matters of um, reviewing the performance of the ANC uh, in and outside government and also the election of party leadership. It will mean that there's going to be a lot of realignment in terms of uh, policy positions within the ANC. There's going to be realignment of different factions or groupings within the ANC as they move towards the elective conference. At the same time, there are certain groupings within the party that have started pronouncing themselves in relation to national leadership, other regions in, uh, uh, in Bembe and um, uh, regions in Sukukune, they've started making such expressions. Even though the, the, the debate on leadership has not been opened in the ANC, this is something that is not easy to prevent because members of the ANC are aware that 2022, they must go for an elective conference, the leaks, uh, your ANC Women's League, the Youth League, and uh, the MKV, they still also have to realign and also go to conference being organized. So it's going to be a very, very busy year for the ANC. But what I think the ANC has to do as well is that members of the ANC that are deployed in government should not abandon their responsibilities of government because ordinary citizens